Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. are the 144,000 in the book of Revelation in chapter 7. Who are they? Would you like to know? Well, go get your Bible and bring it to the TV set with a notebook and a pen. And while you're getting your Bible, we're going to offer these two very important booklets. The first booklet is right here, What Kind of Faith is Required for Salvation? At the bottom of the booklet, it says, Do you know millions who actually believe in Jesus Christ have no salvation at all because they trust in the wrong kind of faith? And the second booklet is, What do you mean salvation? At the bottom of this booklet, it says, Do you realize not one in a hundred knows what it is, how to get it, when you receive it? Don't be too sure you do. Here, once and for all, is the truth made so plain you will really understand it. All you need to do to get these two booklets, you can get a CD, a DVD of this program for free. If you've ordered DVDs before, go ahead and order it, order it again. We'll be happy to send them to you. Okay, let's go to the book of Revelation, and let's go to chapter 7. In the book of Revelation, in verse 1, After these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice, to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Now this is protection for 144,000 people. Who are they? Verse 4, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. And it says here there were 12,000 out of each tribe. The 12 tribes make 144,000. Who are these people? Our purpose today, my purpose today, is to explain clearly who these people are. Now, last week we talked about sin. What was the Bible? definition of sin. Now we're just going to do a little review. 1 John chapter 3 verse 4. Whoever transgresses the law also sins. For sin is, that's the definition of sin, sin is the transgression of the law. Now let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and we'll look at verse 23. Romans 6, verse 23. And it says here, For the wages of sin is death. What, what is death? Death is absence of life. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, we understand that, the, that people die. We understand when people die, that it's an absence of life. And that's what the wages of sin are. Now, let me ask you a question. Suppose you're on a train and you're coming from the East Coast to the West Coast. And you're, you're about halfway through the country and you are notified that the, by the time you reach California, they're going to run out of track on this track that you're on. 
and the whole train is going to plunge over a cliff. Now, when would you get off the train? Would you get off the train in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, or Kansas? Or would you wait to get off the train in El Paso? Or maybe Las Cruces? Where would you get off? Or maybe you would go as far as Arizona. And when you started getting near California, you would maybe want to get off sometime before that last stop. Is that true? When would you get off? Well, that's important. Now, we're just doing it, an analogy here. So stay with me. I'm going to try, I'm going to explain this. Let's go back to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 in verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's everyone has sinned. Now, what do we do about it? Well, let's go to Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1. <clears throat> there is ne therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. What is that all about? Well, if you're walking according to the flesh, uh, you're only interested in physical things. You're not interested in spiritual things. You're, you're, you're looking at the physical things of life, and you're not interested in God's things. You're not interested in the Bible. You're not interested in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ who died for you and for me. For your sins, my sins. Your iniquities, my iniquities. Your trespasses, my trespasses. He took the bullet for you and he took the bullet for me. Now let's go on. Because, verse 7, we'll go up to verse 7 now. Because the carnal mind. What is a carnal mind? That's a mind that's just interested in physical things. It's not interested in spiritual things. The carnal mind is enmity. Enmity means it's hostile against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, the physical mind, it's hostile against God. It's hostile against his laws. It won't, the hostile mind won't keep the laws of God. Okay, verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. So if you have God's Holy Spirit, you are spiritual. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. You don't belong to Christ. You are not a Christian unless you have God's Holy Spirit within you. Now, this is the key. This is the key to the 144,000. This is the key. So let's read on. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. Well, you're not sinning anymore. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit which dwells in you. Okay, let's drop down to verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. They're the sons and the daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Now this word Abba is a, 
is not a Greek word. It's an Aramaic word. It means daddy. There is no, there is no word daddy in the Greek. It's the closest relationship between a child and his father. Okay, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Now let's go to Acts chapter 2. Let's go back to the book of Acts chapter 2, and we'll pick up, pick it up in verse 36. Here it says, therefore, Peter's speaking, and he says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. Would you be cut to the heart if you heard this said to you directly? Well, they were. <clears throat> and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? How do we make this right? Then Peter said to them, repent. What does repent mean? Repent means go the other way. It means go backwards. Stop sinning and start keeping God's laws. God's laws are good for us. Okay, let's continue reading. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, there are pastors, a lot of pastors out there saying you don't have to be baptized. Now, that's a direct contradiction of God's word. Let's read it again. <clears throat> and let every one of you, that's every one of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So it's a requirement. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's how you get the Holy Spirit. You've got to repent. You've got to be baptized. You've got to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior in order to receive his Holy Spirit. <clears throat> For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Now that's you and me. So we are the ones that God is working with, that God is calling. Let's go now to 2 Peter chapter 3, and we'll start in verse 8. 2 Peter 3, verse 8. Now here we are in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. What does it say here? But beloved... Do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now let's read. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. This is the day of the Lord. It's going to come like a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. The elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons will ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hasting the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved. Being on fire and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Now we're going to break. We're going to break here. I want you to Please come right back, and you're going to find out the, who these 144,000 people are. We'll be right back.
Welcome to La Buena Vida Women's Club, located away from the crowds, but close to home. Come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. Treat yourself to a relaxing massage, or unwind the lounge area or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club, located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721. Hi, Las Cruces. Just hanging out by the pool. Do you want to promote your business or event? Well, check out our website and watch your profits go up. Celebrate, celebrate, Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we're buying a car, is always a celebration. Let's turn in our Bibles to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, and let's read here. In verse 1, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after this, he must be released for a little while. God's not done with him yet. So God is going to release him for a little while. Verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Where at? Where did they live and reign with Christ for a thousand years? Revelation chapter 5 and we're looking in verse 10. Revelation 5, verse 10, let's turn there now. Right here, let's read it. And has made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. We're gonna reign on the earth for a thousand years. Now you've heard when you die, you go to heaven, uh, and that the resurrection, you're gonna be resurrected, you're gonna go up to heaven, well, you're going to be here on earth for a thousand years, okay? Now let's go back to Revelation chapter 21. Now this is following Revelation chapter 20 that we just read. We have a thousand years on this earth. Revelation chapter 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. God is going to dwell with with us. We're not going to dwell with God. God is going to dwell with us. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Now, let's go back. We're going to find out right now who are 
the 144,000. Let's go all the way back to Genesis chapter 13. In the very beginning book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 13, and we'll start in verse 14. Now this was Abram. This was before he was called Abraham. Now, Abram means father of a people. Abraham means father of many nations. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift now your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. Now, God gave this land, the land of Israel, to his descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Now, the 144,000, we're going to talk about them right now. Okay, the 144,000 of all of the tribes of Israel, the Jews comprised two and one half of the tribes of Israel. They comprised the tribe of Judah, that's where they get the name Jew, and they comprised the tribe of Benjamin, part of the tribe of Benjamin, and half of the tribe of Levi. So where are the other ten and a half tribes where are they? Where are they gone? They spread out throughout the world. Now let's read in Galatians chapter 3. This is amazing. Amazing. It's been in your Bible all the time. You could have read it any time. Galatians chapter 3 in verse 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You're sons and daughters of God because of what? Because of faith in Christ Jesus. Okay. But therefore, and verse 29, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if you belong to Christ, you are also Abraham's seeds. You're the sons of Abraham. So the 144,000. Today we have something like over 6 billion people on this earth. Over 6 billion. And 144,000 is not even a drop in the bucket. Okay, let's read here. In verse 23, but before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For, all, for you all are sons of God, through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So the 144,000, these are people who have Come to Jesus Christ. They say, I accept your sacrifice and I'm going to repent. I feel sorry for all the sins I've ever committed and I repent for them. I want to be baptized. And they're baptized. They come up out of the water. Hands are laid on them. We pray for them to receive God's Holy Spirit. They receive God's Holy Spirit. Now, they are now the seed of Abraham. They belong to Abraham. You see, they belong to Christ first, then they belong to Abraham second. They are the 144,000 people. They're keeping God's law. They're not breaking it. They're obeying God. 
They're serving God, and they come up out of the waters of baptism in repentance. Now, we are, we are going to have, uh, we're going to, people are going to come to us. We're going to help them understand about baptism. We're going to counsel with anyone who is ready for baptism. If you feel you, you're ready, you want to be baptized, just give us a call. We'll set up an appointment. We'll come and we'll counsel with you and we'll make sure that you're ready for baptism. It's important. Baptism is very important. You have repentance. You're, you're, you've got to repent first. Then second, you've got to be baptized. And the third thing is you must receive God's Holy Spirit. Now, it doesn't sound like it's complicated and it's really not. So we offer these two booklets. Why don't you send away for them today? Why don't you call the number on the screen? The first booklet is, What Kind of Faith is Required for Salvation? And the second booklet is, What Do You Mean Salvation? Now you can have a DVD of this program and any other programs that you'd like. And just, just call us with a, pro, with a phone number on the screen and we'll have somebody at the telephones to take your order and we'll send them right out. And uh, we have an interactive Bible study that we have at the Munson Senior Center, 975 South Mesquite. We have it on Saturday at one o'clock. You're all invited. Just bring a Bible, bring your notebook and a pen. That's all you need. And it's interactive. You can interact. You could ask questions. You could give opinions if you if you think we're you have another answer to a question. You can give it. We'd be happy to hear your 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 side. <clears throat> okay. So therefore, we are re we are at your disposal, and we're happy to help in any way we can. So why don't you call the number on the screen? Order these two very important booklets. Read them along with your Bible. So what kind of faith is required for salvation? And what do you mean salvation? And a DVD of this program, you're welcome to. And until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.